Thank you for following the First Metal Church of Christ. We're really glad to have you. I hope you're having a wonderful day today and we hope God is really blessing you. Be sure to go to our social media and like and follow us, as well as our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on that. And be sure to pass it along to your family and friends as well. I have a lot of great messages uh, that can help you and teach you uh, in your walk with the Lord. Our message today is called The Four Needs of the 21st Century Church. Our text will be Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. <clears throat> Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. And all believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and in prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, and all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. We're going to deal with the four things that the first century church had that the 20th century church needs. Those who had been attending church have shown me that you are here on serious business. Some of you are excited about the, about the Lord. Some of you are excited about the work of the Lord. This is a very important hour. This is a very critical hour. And this is a very serious hour. It is time that we really dig deep into the word of the Lord and seek what God's answers are to the problems that are confronting our society. The second chapter of Acts had become a very familiar chapter to those who call themselves New Testament Christians. We know that on that day of Pentecost that our Lord's church was organized. We know also that on that day that the apostle Peter told the other apostles and they started to preach. When they were steadfastly in Jerusalem, they were waiting on power, on the power to come. And when it had come, they went out and carried out the Great Commission. A lot of us are familiar with Acts 2.38. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, that is what we are supposed to be familiar with. Preachers are supposed to be familiar with it. We are supposed to accept those who have repented and have been baptized into Christ for the remissions of sins. In a lot of our churches in the Brotherhood, we need to get down and start to teach Bible basic again. We have drifted away from the fundamentals of Bible basic. We need to teach people that it is essential to believe the gospel and repent of your sins and confess your faith in Jesus and be immersed for the remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then the Bible teaches after this that for the promises to you and your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him and he's testified with many other words, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. I hope that we have restored in our minds the Bible basic plans of salvation. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to, to prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. The first century church was a fearing church. And I believe that one thing that made the first century church great was the fact that it was a fearing church. And the 20th century church will be much more powerful in the local communities. If we would restore those passages again and be a God-fearing church as it was founded in the Word of God. What effect did the fear of God have on the first century church? The fear of God caused them to continue in the apostles' doctrine of fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. If the fear of God could be reborn in our churches like it was back then, it would, it would all the members would be continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine of fellowship, breaking the bread, and in prayer. If the people would have the fear of God in them, they would continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine when they were on vacation. They would continue steadfastly when they would have company. They would be faithful and true. And probably the reason why we are seeing so many empty chairs and pews today is because there seems to be a lacking of the Holy Spirit. People are not filled with the fire anymore. People today do not have the fear of God in their hearts like the first century church had. 
Until people learn to fear God, we are not going to be able to evangelize the world or save the world. We need to teach the fear of Almighty God to the people that call themselves Christians. What has happened to the life? What has happened to the feelings? What has happened to the spirit? What has happened to the zip in us? When someone is really on fire for Christ, Christ is one, number one in their lives. Christ is number one on Sunday. Christ is number one on Tuesday. Christ is number one on every day of the week. Fear means to reverence God, love God, and to be faithful to God, and to be faithful to his supper, the Lord's supper, and to be faithful in stewardship, faithful in prayer, and faithful in all that has commanded us to do. We need to learn how to fear Almighty God in the churches. If we do, we will have a house full Wednesday night. If we do, we will have a house full on Sunday night. And the second thing is, do you know how to praise God in your life? Not only did the first century church fear God, but they also knew how to praise God. Do you enjoy praising God? I think that some churches don't enjoy praising God when they run over top of each other, trying to get out the door to beat the other denominational churches to the restaurants or to the buffet. I believe that we have forgotten how to praise God. And when we learn how to praise him, it should be a constant a part of our daily lives. We should praise him when we get up in the morning. And we should praise him during the day. And we should praise him when we go to bed at night. And we should praise the and exalt Almighty God. Praising God should be a major part of our lives. Sometimes we look pickled instead of saved and have been baptized in beet juice instead of the blood. We all need to be saved and we all need to be washed in the blood. Where is the joy of the Lord? We're not going to save the world on Sunday morning. We're not going to save the world on Wednesday night. We're not going to save the world when the world can't see Jesus in us, and if we're not preaching or sharing the message of God. And are we going to have to learn how to praise Almighty God all over again? You see, and the third thing is that the, that the church needs today is in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, And now has they observed the boldness of Peter and John, and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men. They were marveling and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Verse 31 tells us in that same chapter, verse chapter 4, And when they had prayed, the place that they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak the word of God with boldness. You see, here we need to learn that the first century church, that they had boldness. The 20th century churches have become too tender to stand up and be bold with love in telling the story of Jesus Christ. We need boldness today. God wants these preachers to get off the totem pole and start preaching the gospel. I believe that if a lot of these preachers would stop trying to be the totem pole climbers and too busy occupying men, and if these preachers would be out evangelizing and get off that totem pole, start teaching and preaching the word of God with boldness. Then maybe we would have an awakening in the New Testament churches of America and the early churches with the bold church. Some were along the line that we are going to have to learn that our job as deacons, our job as elders, our jobs as evangelists, our jobs as preachers, and we're going to have to start learning this is what our jobs are, and this is what God requires of us that we need to be doing. It's not done when we get to the service on Sunday morning or Sunday night. It's not done when it's all over. It's not done when Wednesday night service is over. Okay, this is just a filling station. The boldness comes not when we are together, but it's when we are not together. See, being bold enough to preach the plan of salvation and invite, and invite them to a congregation that is on fire for Jesus Christ. We need to restore that kind of boldness back in our 20th century churches today. You see, and the fourth thing that the churches need today is after all the emptiness and all the emphasis that's on boldness and on fire for God, and, uh, and, and the emphasis on fearing God and the emphasis is on praising God. I see something happening here in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20, verses 36 to 38. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorry most of all for the words which he had spoke. But they 
should see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. You see, I see a bold war horse for God. I see a God-fearing man that is not afraid to preach the gospel anywhere. Heaven high, hell deep, and shotgun barrel straight. You know, this great man of God had created such a tender, compassion relationship with those around him. Wherever Paul went, he started a riot or a revival, and they thought that they would never see him again, and they brought tears to their eyes. You see, the first century church showed feelings. It showed emotions, and it had love among its members. You see, the restoration should, be, should not be buried, but we should be bold enough to preach it. And at the same time, have the inner compassion and love among the people so that we could pray for one another and shed tears together because of our love for each other. You see, the 20th century church can have these ingredients restored. The walls will not be able to hold the amount of people in it. But let's start to fear God together. Let's be bold together. And we need to have compassion and concern for those who are lost. The 20th century church needs to be revived. The answer to the problems are not going to be found in a local bookstore. The answers will not be found in some place that God's people have found the answers all down through the years. And it is in this wonderful book called the Bible, God's Word. This is where the answers to our society's problems are going to be found. And this is the answer where the church needs to get back to the basics, the Bible basics of the plan of salvation, evangelizing and showing the fear of God in our lives. We need the fear of God back in us.